Oh, wow, these lights really are bright, aren't they? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to TV Beats. That's where you are, in case you weren't sure. I'm Kathleen McGinnis. I'm the other moderator. Everybody's had Wendy, had Wendy all day. Now you get Kathleen. So uh, we are uh, thrilled that you're back. We have a lot of conversation to be had. Everybody sat in the back of the room. What is that about? <laughs> it's, not, it's not like you're back in school. Come on. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. See, they get the prize. They're going to get the prize, even if they do trip over the... Um, all right, so we are very, very uh, lucky that we have with us Cila Rus, who is the marketing and PR manager for Baltics, Fox International Channels. And this is what we're calling our fireside chat with National Geographic. There is no fire, but please welcome up Sila. Okay. <laughs> Let's make sure that works for you. Very nice. So, Sila, just to give us a little bit of uh, uh, context and a little bit of an overview, just give us the thumbnail of Nat Geo in Tallinn in Estonia. What is, the, what is National Geographic about here? Uh, National Geographic is all about, I think, our audience uh, because um, uh, we are related to audience or we focus on audience which is curious, intellectual, smart. And that's what our content is all about and what our channel is all about, or Yellow Frame. It's uh, one of the um, most trustful frame in the world, I mean, I have to say. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's um, basically uh, what I feel and what I feel or relate to our audience. Super. And you brought a little trailer, yeah. perhaps, that we could yeah, get yeah. see some yeah. visuals? Yeah, some videos shows more than 1,000 birds. <laughs> so, lovely Evgeny. <laughs> Would you mind? Thank you. After 130 trips around the sun, we can say with authority, this wasn't just another year. No. Not to me. It was another record shatter. It is magic. Another name added. Everything is connected. There are no real boundaries here. Another world explored. Amazing. Everyone wants something from the great Picasso. I need to see things in a new way. This was where I was meant to be. I didn't care what anybody said. I made my journey to be an astronaut. An adventure. Can a human being run a marathon in under two hours? We're getting ready for Katie's face transplant. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. If you're there just to win the prize, you're missing the point of science fair. Countless pages turned. That's really scary. I felt like I was up there with him. More horizons reached. Space is a new frontier. Yeah, big plans for this planet. Another void touched. This is for the adventurous spur. I'm going to tell you about the most incredible place. This is what we do year after year. To be a part of this legacy of National Geographic is truly humbling. Oh, and another thing. Coming in 2019. This is day one of an entirely new world. I've got a lot of questions. Welcome to the hot zone. Here's to another 130 years. Changes the essence of the universe. Pushing our story further. Go ahead, look up at the stars and wonder what's possible. 
It always gives me like goosebumps. <laughs> oh my God, this is so amazing. <laughs> it is not your grandfather's Nat Geo, is it? Uh, yeah. But it feels like. Uh, maybe a little bit. So how do we define, how do we describe the brand of Natural, National Geographic? How do you describe the brand? I would describe it like um, it's um, actually like way of life. It's um, about the people, about the stories, about life in Earth, in space, uh, about the science fiction, uh, science, history. It's actually about the life itself and it's really uh, what we are showing to people. It's really actually makes you humble, yeah, as, as they say, it makes you humble. So we have, we have the old Nat Geo, which is take a camera into somewhere where no one's ever been and show us the natural world. And we have the new Nat Geo, which is now some original content, some narrative and documentary mix, some hybrids going on. What is it saying about the company with regards to how they're finding and deciding to tell their stories? Uh, actually, I think it's uh, we are try to also keep up with trends uh, as we see that um, uh, it's not uh, just uh, non-scripted and uh, historical stuff is selling, but it's also entertainment and scripted. So um, past, I think, um, uh, 10 years, we produced uh, some stuff with this uh, scripted shows, which actually is real good because our content or uh, the stories itself is true stories. We are not telling something like usual nice uh, Hollywood stuff, but still uh, really good, uh, which educates you. You you will get to know things and, and so on. It's It's really... But they still speak to the human condition. It's not like yeah. back in the day when we were in the seventh grade and we have to see those stupid documentaries and no. we all fall asleep, no. right? It's no. not like this anymore. No, absolutely not. Because, you know, we have YouTube, we have uh, Netflix, Amazon, TV, name it. We have, like, Hollywood, which is also trends up those true stories, movie, which is, like, uh, award-winning and etc. So we want to be the same. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, this, uh, how we're doing, and uh, also the actors, our hosts are really, as you saw, Will Smith, etc., Morgan Freeman, mm -hmm. uh, they are really well known, and uh, doing uh, uh, cooperation with us, it's, it's really nice. Uh, but, yeah, this is just a small part of our production. We, uh, our, uh, like, uh, main is uh, non-scripted production, which sure. is related history, science, cosmos. Everything. Everything. Photographs, everything. Uh, explorers mainly, so uh, stuff that's coming about National Geographic Society. Yes. Yeah. Which started as an explorer society that was going to places where previously nobody had ever been before. Exactly. Trying to see what exactly. was there. 130 years ago. Yeah. 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 Nice, th nice that they're still and there. And uh, they, they were all men, but now <laughs> society has the woman in board, so it's, it's really, we had like a couple of weeks ago a meeting and just they showed the picture because first was like um, 30 guys on right. the row and now it's like 100 and more than half of them uh, are women, so the world is changing. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> like, of course they were all men. Of course they yeah. were. Um, but yes, woohoo indeed, for sure. So, so Nat Geo in Estonia, tell me what that looks like. It's, you bring, it's all, uh, you don't do any original content here. No. So you bring everything in. And how do you make your decisions with regards to content for audience? No, it's... Uh, Based on my like gut feeling or like uh, how I s how I see the audience, what is the trend, research data, and etc. Uh, but and um, yeah, as I a little bit previous mentioned that um, avoid any political issue and etc. So uh, so just uh, to try stay uh, our true. Um, nature in here uh, that we are historical, educating, uh, and this kind of channel. Uh, but yeah, I uh, uh, sometimes checking some kind of uh, films which is like maybe s not so uh, well taken in uh, in our territory. So and then I'm like deciding. So, but it's not so many. Yeah. So mostly what becomes is directed. directed. So 
first time for me in Estonia, yeah. which I'm very happy to be here, by the way. Prophet, thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, but what I've noticed in this short time that I've been here, which is like eight days now, uh, so clearly I know everything about Estonia, um, is that there seems to me to be a very global view here of uh, climate, of food, of sort of the world at large and how it affects the country here. Like it, I feel like there, this is not, this is a country that's very aware. Do you feel the same for your audience? Have I gotten it right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, uh, if you're talking about the Baltic, like Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, mm -hmm. Estonia is most uh, European and most advanced in here. Then we're going <laughs> to Latvia, then I'm still something else, and then Lithuania, which is more like uh, Poland and uh, this kind of... Wait, are we going to have a nationalistic moment here? Is anybody <laughs> yeah. Do I need to worry about this? <laughs> yeah. And it's really difficult, like, you know, okay, you like this, you like this, and we like this, okay, yeah. how to, you know, be fair one another. How do we find, what do we find for our uh, Estonian audiences then? Are they more attracted to things about climate change, things about discovery? Is there any trends that you're seeing uh, with the content from Nat Geo that you get? Yeah, um, more like envi uh, environmental stuff and also historical. Is uh, yeah, world, uh, world wars one, two is good uh, and um, yeah, historical stuff. But um, yeah, mostly yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so how many of you are filmmakers or story content creators? Anybody? One, two, th a few of you. And how many of you are broadcasters and? Commissioners, and how many of you are writers? And how many of you just uh, said I had nothing else to do? <laughs> so I'm here. Okay, all right, oh, I caught him right there. There were two. So especially for people who create content uh, on their own. So in my world, I, I lump everything together. Telling a story is telling a story. So for me, whether it's documentary or mm -hmm. narrative doesn't matter to me. But for the people who are doing content creation here, will Nat Geo ever start to do, like a Netflix, start to do more locally oriented, uh, locally created content, do you think? Is that something in the future? Or will it always be done outside and brought in? I want to believe it's uh, future. I really want to believe. But uh, I think uh, we have a, a small scope here. Um, I mean the market is a little bit small. Even we like to think that we are Baltic and or we are Estonia, but uh, compared to other countries, it's little small small but yeah uh, really maybe uh, maybe something um, which is uh, I think uh, one of our trends as well we are going to be more like world uh, combined uh, one uh, filming is Germany one in Netherlands one in Poland so maybe maybe yeah for the one episode something or some slot can be filmed here you know this is so I think uh, more reality option than uh, just to all filming here. But of course, it's about the money, about all this, uh, how to do this. So uh, yeah, I hope, I really, really hope. And how are the new trends in filmmaking affecting Nat Geo? Or are they, I would imagine, I know they are, I know the answer is they are affecting them, but we have, we have everything from drone cinematography to new technology to the animation and 3D things that can happen in, in 360 filmmaking and stuff. How is that affecting what's happening at Nat Geo? Well, I see that we are using also the animated documentary combined version. We are coming out to new show Cosmos, which is cannot be in reality <laughs> like shooting wait place. are you serious that's not real <laughs> come on <laughs> i really oh <laughs> but yeah how we are like doing uh, i saw it so it's it's really 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 nice so mm -hmm. and that's yeah as you said one of the trend and how where we are going in this these times but um and also this uh, kind of uh, hollywood uh, scripted drama nice movie etc it's also one of the things where we are going uh, but again it's huge budget because we have to film minimum six episodes one hour episodes it's comparing to just a movie it's uh, can you imagine six hour film actually with a with yeah. what the, our producer uh, 
uh, producing and then uh, compared to just one movie, it's one and a half or something. So it's, the, yeah, budget is bigger and that everything. So minimum, you always have to do six episodes. Each episode si is 60 minutes or 50 minutes for TV. Uh, yeah, if you do a script, I think, yeah, it's minimum six. Uh, then uh, it has been eight or ten or twelve. And how do you guys, how does Nat Geo find the celebrity factor? Does does it, is the, the increase in audience when you add celebrity, like Will Smith? <laughs> I love him. <laughs> he's now my generic <laughs> celebrity because he's the last I saw. Or Morgan Freeman. Um, when you add celebrity, what happens to your audience share? Is it that dramatic of an increase? When you add? Yeah, yeah, of course. People uh, like to relate, you know. Will Smith, who, who doesn't like to relate to Will Smith? <laughs> nice comic, music uh, actor, uh, name it so. But yeah, people like to relate. <coughs> so it's easier and they are um, easy to sell. Mm -hmm. Sell mm -hmm. as well, so it's, it's yeah. Interesting. So you guys, I want to be able to take questions from you at any time. So if you have one, simply raise your hand and I'll keep an eye. And until I see a hand, I'm going to keep talking. Oh, Wendy, go. Yes, yes please. Um, I'm just wondering what impact Netflix has had, because obviously they're doing so well in the nonfiction world, and even moving into this space where they have a David Attenborough Black Hole World series. Is, is that impacting what Nat Geo is doing? Yeah, have Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> but no, okay. <laughs> um, uh, Netflix is little bit because we have linear, uh, linear uh, TV here, but also we uh, launched the same application uh, as uh, Netflix. So we launched uh, like all over the world, and now it's in Estonia also available, Nacho Plus, and it's all the content uh, and much more is available for the audience. And yes, that's that's also that b people you want to not sit in front of the TV and watching. Yeah, seven o'clock something is our own, and I'm like uh, waiting this. No, it's history. This li uh, linear trend is uh, decreasing. So and then we have to have this kind of application that uh, yes, you will see in in the forest, in the tent, in the I don't know school or lessons breaks or whatever. So. That's where we are going as well, and producing uh, some of the content only to Nature Plus. So that's going to be is Netflix ruling the way in what it is marketing, so they're not going to. No. <laughs> like if she said no, like no, no. Why would they do that? Why no. would Netflix do that? So, but but let's follow up on this just a little bit because Nacho had some trouble a few years back and really reorged. I mean, it reorganized completely. What was what what is the what would you say are the main things that have helped Nat Geo come up to where they are today over the past five, six, seven years? I think one of as I already mentioned is uh, scripted content mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are uh, rebranded uh, ourselves. So we were like a little bit you know as I asking you what what do you feel? What is tone and feel about Nacho Blast? People would say, like, okay, let me think. It's the animal. It's the animal. Okay, maybe a little bit his story and uh, something, you know. It's very old audience, mm -hmm. you know, all the 65 year old, like, nothing to do and uh, sitting in front of the TV. <laughs> and yes, uh, we are watching because we want to, like, be part of these historical events uh, once again. So. But uh, yeah, we rebranded and we uh, went to premium premium channel with uh, entertainment and etc. So that uh, also young audience, mm. uh, our students, for example, I have 14 year old daughter. What she's doing? Does she read the book? Mm, no. Uh, does she watch the like Netflix or okay. Netflix Plus? Yes. And uh, there is a historical content, so it's very easy. You're watching some, I don't know, uh, World War, war content, and it's like, yeah, I have facts on the table, and it's it's really easy. It, it's educating. So there, I think it's the way where uh, world is going. So not so much maybe in books because all in video, mm -hmm. nothing to do. It's how how we are at the moment. Where we are so really, the integration of the new systems, the the mobile app, or the the access for people who are not as traditionally tied to old-fashioned platforms, perhaps, yeah. has really helped Nat Geo. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
And of course, I know, or I believe that you know the biggest news that we merged with the uh, Walt Disney Company, so it's also a little help. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, Disney likes, the mouse likes to eat up everybody. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true, but, so n but not uh, in our case. Uh, well, uh, society is separated anyway, and, right. uh, and uh, we we keep th it that way because it's very important that we support explorers, uh, photographers, uh, and people who want to like travel and uh, etc. And uh but it is interesting because you said something about sixty-five-year-olds, which I'm not going to take to heart. I'm going to try I'm not sorry. to. I'm <laughs> sorry. Just saying, I'm not you 65 so yet. Yeah, thanks. Not, <laughs> not quite 65, but you know, let's get, let's not get carried away. But now I'm looking at this audience, and I would say that there's more of you over the age of 25 than under. Maybe more of you over the age of 30 than under. I'm not willing to go farther. Yeah, uh, yes, I would, but I'm not willing to. So, how many of you watch Nat Geo? How many of you watch content? Oh, that's a small percentage. How many of you think it's for those old people? Oh, nobody's willing to say. Not for my friends. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but there is something right now, there is something, especially with the, the kinds of people who are out there, mm -hmm. the, the Watsons, the whatever, the people, the Greenpeace people who are, have become really media savvy and media heroes that makes you inspired to watch them, yeah? So you, you kind of make rock stars out of your out of your adventurers yeah fair yeah. enough yeah fair enough for yeah. example the chain or alex Arnold who climbed a mountain mm -hmm. uh, with no uh, security on mm -hmm. is like uh, i met him and uh, we had discussion that um, the film was made already like two three years ago when uh, it uh, we launched it uh, in our channel and it went our oscar run so and he told that okay i did it already i didn't know that it is like you know, big thing, and <laughs> it's, uh, I'm going to be famous. But yes, that's one uh, of the things that we can do. We yeah. have like uh, 45 countries uh, on board to launch something and to make uh, people famous, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this chain, uh, chain Goodall with Chimpan's uh, life, how we uh, built the film, all these old uh, materials and etc. Now granted, she was famous first. Yeah, but she was, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. But the materials and everything, so it was amazing footage, mm -hmm. amazing yeah. thing, and she's an amazing woman, so. She's over 65, by the way, just saying. Yeah, just not that I wanted to say, I'm just saying. Anybody <laughs> else have a question out there, other than how old we are? <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good question. Difference between I acquiring and commissioning. It's good questions. Mm, I think um, our own stuff uh, should be something um, sixty-five percent our studio content. Yeah, and uh, sixty-five, maybe seventy. D depends, and then then uh, then it's all else. Uh, willing remain the same or maybe increase because uh, yeah regarding this merge and uh, our future plans uh, of course we are very like focus our studio content and you know publish the stories about uh, natural society aside and it's our one goal like but this, this actually is a really good question that also speaks to the level of risk that the content creator has to take on themselves, which sounds like now they're going to have to take on quite a bit. And the studio, has the studio given you, has Disney given you any parameters of what it is, the kind of content that they want to be looking for, or do they, are they hands off? No, not at, not at the moment, no. Oh, we, we can't wait to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's uh, because the... To be honest, Disney is something else. Mm. Yeah, this is something else, and we have been doing natural stuff like you know, 130 years and uh, the channel. So we have this knowledge how to do it, and we have uh, good practice, good history with it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's mm -hmm. uh, no point to interfere here, there, do this or change that. So, uh, but yeah, one thing we which we are focusing year over the year is uh, social impact. 
So mm -hmm. it has been the planet and plastic, uh, reduce the plastic. But now, as I mentioned, it is woman of impact. We are talking about uh, like most powerful woman who's influenced uh, in some society part. So it is a focus changing every year. Yes, focus is changing. Okay, so every this year. this I have I, I, uh, this uh, I'm going to ask a little bit of a tough question and I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to to <laughs> answer. Sorry about that. But I find this to be a little bit um, challenging because we have we focus on plastics for a year. Plastics don't get bad. The problem with plastics didn't get better. But then we've moved on, like, for now, we're going to focus on women instead. Mm -hmm. What happens to the campaign for the plastics to go away? It's still ongoing. Yeah? It's still ongoing. Does it still have the same focus and the same? No. Yeah. Because, yeah, because uh, d uh, this year, focus will be a woman. On women instead. And yes. And, uh, but um, I must say that I cannot say that the, the plastic issue is uh, level same, what, uh, what it was like a year ago or two years ago. I think it's going better. Because people uh, like uh, you, you start actually think what they are doing in the home and and the shops and uh, all those uh, who is producing plastic may start to think yes maybe we could produce in somehow the waste. So, so there's thought, but there's not an actual decrease in the amount of plastics being used. So not yet. Okay, yet. but if I uh, like the, um, thinking about how is in Estonia, definitely we are reducing here. So yes, Asia country is a uh, <laughs> tricky one, <laughs> but European, I think it's uh, getting better year by year. Okay, so we won't we won't dive into the, the, the we'll do that later. We'll dive yes, into the numbers on that yeah. later. Anybody else have a question from the audience for Nat Geo? Um, oh no, they're waving to each other. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought they they were they were saying hi to each other. I thought their hands were going up. Um, so. Uh, sort of as the last wrap up uh, for uh, for the uh, conversation, what should we? What is it that you're most excited about for Nat Geo for the coming year that you can share with us that we should look out for? Do you have any favorites besides Will Smith? <laughs> <laughs> besides Will Smith. Mm, yeah, I have actually one thing I'm really, really waiting for among all others, uh, which, which is genius. We are dedicating this to Aretha Franklin and uh, it will be amazing. We just, uh, last year we did was uh, the same <coughs> uh, series scripted one and was dedicated to Pablo Picasso life. And I really love myself, this life stories. Uh, and uh, I think Aretha will be one of the greatest women mm, just so that we could talk about and show to the people. And it's, it's Fantastic. really nice. Thank yes. you. Thank you. That's lovely. So a big round of applause, please, Priscilla. Thank you.